Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Talha, where are you from? Dhaka Dhaka And One class support to me? Class 10 Class 10 Okay If first chilo got to go? No, I wasn't Okay uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, my name is Ifaz. Uh, I'm 13 years old and I'm attending ninth grade right now. Okay. Welcome to our class. Our kids are today. Not done. Oi, our show is good. Hey, Matro, Farzad, Ifaz, and Ryan, can I have a chat? Our show is good. Hey, guys. Junaid, what are you doing? Sir. Yeah. I'm going to show you the camera off. Yeah, I'm going to show you the camera off. Who is this FM Limon? And he left. Okay. Probably not in his game. Recording in progress. Okay, Fahmita was MS <laughs> or FM. <laughs> Limon. Okay, <laughs> got it now. Okay, so um, first I'm gonna hear from you what we, you know, discussed in the previous session, like uh, yesterday. So who will, who will be first? What? Did we discuss in the previous class yesterday? Who can remember? Junaid? Yes, sir. So we <clears throat> discussed about Islam. Yep. Uh, which part of Islam? About what? Submission or what is Islam? Okay, we discussed about the meaning of Islam and uh, uh, we talked about the literal meaning and how that meaning is connected with, uh, you know, the religion of Islam. So, okay, Ryan, can you remember what is the meaning of Islam? Islam, <clears throat> Islam means submission, right? Submission, yeah. So, uh, what is the link or, you know, like, uh, connection? between submission and religion. Can you say something about it? Like right. literal uh, literal meaning of Islam is submission or to submit or to surrender. That's all we know. But uh, what's, you know, what does it mean, you know, to surrender or does it has, have to anything with Islam, the religion of Islam? What is the real connection between submission and religion? What do you think? Anyone? You got my can question? You, can you repeat the question? Yeah, I said we all know that the uh, lexical meaning of Islam is submission or to submit or to surrender okay mm -hmm. so how is it connected with the concept of religion okay so you know by by the word religion we we understand something else like an institute or a huge group of people who have a same belief okay so is there any connection between that religion and the lexical meaning of Islam, which is submission? That's what I asked. Hello. Don't 
don't I take it, you know, know, very, uh, you know, complicated. It's not that complicated. Just is it that we have to submit ourselves to Allah by at the judgment and for the work we did? Yeah, of course. That's it. Yeah. So submission, you know, when when you talk about like religion or something, that means you are you believe something okay not uh, some random beliefs but it is a systematic institutional belief like a large group of people they believe in the same thing you know that you do okay like you believe that there is one god who is our creator and who is only uh, he is worthy of you know getting our worship and you know he sent a lot of messengers to the human beings to guide them to take them to the right way and you know there will be here after after death and we will be asked about whatever we are doing uh, in this world and there will be jannat and jahannam okay so these are the you know common beliefs that we share as muslims okay so so when it comes to religion by default there are some important issues that come with this okay first of all some belief second it's some rituals rituals mean you know some commandments and you know some uh celebrations like eid or something okay and there are a lot of commandments in islam that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to do uh, like, you know, Salat, Zakat, Saum, Hajj, okay, reciting the Holy Quran, and, you know, these are the pure Ibadah, okay, and there are also other commandments, commandments which are related to our day-to-day -day life, our, uh, you know, ethical and moral uh, issues, uh, like how to deal with our uh you know other people our parents or family members relatives okay neighbors and such and such so you know there are a lot of issues there are a lot of rulings and uh commandments which are set by islam that means by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself all we got those things from through Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay, so that's thing. That's it. So if you call yourself a Muslim, which means Muslim, Muslim literally means that the one who sub who submits, the one who surrenders himself. Okay, so that means that when you call yourself a Muslim, that means you are bound to obey all the commandments and all the rulings and all the rituals that Islam suggests, okay? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, commanded us in this framework of Islam, okay? In the name of Islam. So here we can't question, okay? So like in the Fajr time, if you, if you just feel sleepy, you can't just, you know, say that okay i'm feeling sleepy i'm gonna sleep i i'm not gonna you know wake up and get up and you know wash my hands and face and i have to pray i'm not gonna do that you can't say that okay if you say that you are a muslim that means you are submissive towards the will of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards the commandments and rituals of islam okay so you are bound to do that if you call yourself a muslim you get the point so where where what is you know what does this submission you know mean so submission mean you have to be totally submissive you have to accept you have to surrender yourself to the will of allah SWT. what allah wishes for you you think that that is better even if i don't understand okay of course, it is understandable and uh, it is not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, never uh, asks from us something which is not 
you know illogical or uh, irrational or something okay there uh, we have to just understand it uh, with a, a sound mind that's it so uh, so if we just think about the very uh, you know concept of Islam and the meaning of Islam and the definition of Islam, definition of Islam we 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 will understand that what Islam really is okay and what does it mean to be a Muslim and what should we really do in this life okay so we, we will get those things uh, clear inshallah okay so as uh, we I have already told you in uh, in the in our previous session uh, that what we are going to learn or what we are going to try to study in this uh, you know in this class okay so for those who just joined today uh, for your kind information that this class is all about Quran okay and Quran is the message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the human beings okay how should we deal uh, you know with uh, anything that we face in this life and how should we uh, lead our life okay so it is kind of a prescription a suggestion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to us through his you know last prophet uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he sent it in such a way that human being can understand okay so of course we are not uh, we don't know Arabic so the Quran is in Arabic so that's why we find it very hard to understand it even though we sometimes don't understand uh, if we read the translation because there are uh, the verses of the Quran you know those sometimes those are very contextual okay so we don't understand without the context without the background that when was this verse revealed if we, you don't know the story you will not you won't get it so that's why you need a teacher that's why you need a systematic way of learning Quran okay so again we are not going to learn only that you know we are not going to learn at all the uh, you know a recitation or reading how to read the Quran but rather we will be dealing with the meaning and the teachings and the uh, you know the the messages that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us to know from the Quran okay so that will be our main focus okay so as we say that the very first uh, uh, we uh, today is our introductory class uh, we will get to know the basic concepts of Islam and uh, we will know the basic information about Quran then from the next week inshallah uh, we will start with Surah Al-Fatiha and gradually we will go through the whole Quran inshallah topic wise okay we will take some verses and we will learn the meaning then we will discuss what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, sent what was the you know what is the real, real message and the basic message from those verses and what can we learn from those verses we will be you know talking about those things and if something comes up like fiqh and aqida or other stories of prophets we we will deal with those things inshallah okay so uh, as i have already said to you that islam what does islam say and uh, what does uh, Islam mean? Okay, can you see the screen? I can see the screen, yeah. Yes, I can see it. Okay. Okay, so here you can see that Islam is the literal meaning of Islam is to surrender or submit, to submit, okay? To whom? To one God. Who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so and we have to understand that Islam is the only accepted religion to God okay sometime we you know hear from here and there a lot of things which are not uh, you know true 
but sometimes we just get confused like every religion in this world is you know good so you can follow any religion to, to respect another religion is something else and to you know profess that other religions are true that is something different okay so as muslim as a muslim you know you have to you have to make this thing very clear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in the Quran that only only accepted religion to him is Islam and what does Islam mean Islam means to submit submission so the person who is fully submitted towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is okay in terms of you know uh, his salvation or something okay so now we have to understand what does it mean to submit ourselves towards uh, the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can you submit yourself with the other religion you know other than Islam can you submit like if you if you follow Christianity can you submit yourself you know uh, uh, if you are a good Christian or if you are a good Jew or if you are a good Hindu and you you know you have uh you you are a good person and you don't lie you don't cheat you don't backbite or anything you your moral code is very strong okay so is it okay to be personally good and to follow other religion is it okay what do you think no it's not, no, it's not okay can you say why why is that because even if uh you're a good person you still have to follow uh allah's will and allah's will states that you can only follow islam which is because it's the only religion for allah so yeah you can't become any other okay the main problem with other religions you will you won't find any religion which is not involved with shirk okay so and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very you know hard with those persons with those people who commit shirk okay so if you commit shirk then you know without uh if you if you uh die in that position then you know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this thing very clear that there will be no salvation or he will be thrown into the into the you know hellfire without anything any oh, fatima you have raised your hand anything you want to ask yes um uh what what does do um, um what does um, 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 কিনে uh you know with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of his uh in terms of his personality in terms of his uh sifa that means his attributes in terms of his actions you can't do you can't make partner in those things if you say that like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is khaliq khaliq means who a khaliq literally means creator so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator okay he created everything from nothing so this is our belief if you just say that no 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 allah didn't create uh, it there was someone else or allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know took from hell took some help from someone else or there was another you know deity or someone okay or, or another god who is you know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, who is helper of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you are committing shirk you are giving the right of you know this uh right of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to someone else which is shirk you can do it allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very hard 
about this matter okay so we whatever you do like if if you don't pray you this is obviously uh, something uh, which is not permissible in islam you have to pray five times okay if you deliberately skip then uh, you this is a punishable punish you know punish punishable uh, sin okay so allah if you just uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may forgive you for that okay but if you commit sin if you commit shirk sorry if you commit shirk jodi tumi shirik koro mane allah ke allah er shonge onno kauke shirik koro orthat if you prostrate before someone else other than allah like many people do okay like hindus they prostrate you know uh, uh, durga and other uh, kali and other you know uh, idols and statues okay they do worship other things other than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it is obviously a shirk okay christianity if you see the christianity christian the main theme of the religion of christianity is trinity so like a holy father okay holy son and the holy spirit father son and holy spirit so these three you know in the combination of these three makes uh, god they think like that okay so they are making partner with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is shirk and you know you can't find any religion other than islam where uh, there is no shirk okay so that means you if you do if you commit shirk if you if you are a follower of any other religion other than islam then you are you know you you submit it or not doesn't matter but you are obviously committing shirk that's it so so you know the person who commits shirk cannot be you know uh cannot be worthy of getting salvation okay that's for sure allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very clear so that actually you know uh points to the fact that islam is the only religion on this on the face of earth okay which is accepted there we where there is no shirk okay and only f- by following this religion one can get salvation so that's it you get it ram i understand yeah yep okay so you know the 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 one who follows islam is called a muslim okay we all know that and you know so and there is obviously you don't need to belong uh, to any ethnicity or race or nationality like islam is only for the arabs or you know like like this uh the people of east okay it's not like that islam is uh you know uh it is beyond any race and national nationality and tribe okay ethnicity and other things okay it is universal it is an universal religion so anyone who uh follows the main rulings of islam like who uh who be you know bears witness that there is no god except allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and prophet muhammad is the last messenger from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if he you know uh accept the five pillars of islam then obviously we can say that he is a muslim or she is a muslim okay so there are five pillars of islam like if you make a house okay and there are some foundation founding you know pillars so if there is something wrong in those pillars then your house will be will collapse in at any time okay so what are those important five pillars let's see okay so first of all shahada shahada means the faith the iman okay the in bangla we say kalima okay so la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah or ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu rasuluhu these are the arabic phrases which mean that you know uh i bear witness that there is no god except allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh prophet muhammad is the messenger and a servant of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so uttering these words and believing in it you 
become a Muslim. This, it is very simple. Okay, you just enter into the house of Islam, just uttering these words. Okay, just uttering these these sentences. Okay, and then there are other four pillars which are doable. Okay, you have to do those things. Those are some acts. Okay, shahada is something. If you just say this thing, okay, and you just believe it, it is okay. You are done. A salah, saum, zakah, hajj. These are the things we are the commandments of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala as rituals that every Muslim should follow. Okay. So first two, okay, salah and saum. If you think about these issues, you will understand that these four pillars, you know, uh, apart from shahada, these four pillars, I mean, salah, saum, zakat, and hajj, these are of different, you know, categories, okay? Like salah and saum, these two, these two, you know, uh, pillars are follows or you know, mandatory for all the Muslims, regardless they are, uh, they, uh, whether they are poor or, you know, wealthy, that doesn't matter. If you are a rich man, you have to pray. If you are a poor man, you have to pray, okay? It won't make any difference. Saum is same thing, okay? If you have no money, you have to offer, you have to, you know, uh, observe fasting in Ramadan, okay? And if you if you are if if you are a healthy person, if you are capable of, you know, uh, if you are not sick, then you have to of course uh, pray five times a day, and you have to uh, keep fasting in Ramadan. So these are these two are different than the other two, which are zakat and hajj. Zakat and hajj are obviously for those who are capable of doing these things okay like if you are not that wealthy zakat is not obligatory for you okay so we will uh, later we will get to know you know what amount money uh, you know requires zakat so uh, we will get to that inshallah later but uh, we have to understand that zakat is not for all you know a homeless person or a person who barely you know uh, lives his life, uh, he doesn't have to give zakah, okay? And Hajj, if you are capable of going to the uh, Makkah, then you are, you have to, you know, uh, pilgrim, uh, you have to, uh, you know, offer Hajj, okay? Otherwise, Hajj is not obligatory for you. So, uh, these are, the, and if you uh, think about it, that prayer is purely physical you know it, it, it has to do with your body okay all you need a healthy body to offer salah you don't need any money and it has nothing to do with your society or anything else okay salah is purely a physical ibadah okay saum as well but saum has something to do with your society like if you are hungry if you offer if you observe fasting then you'll understand the how a poor feels when he's or she's hungry okay so that makes you you know more eager to take care of those who are not capable of taking care of themselves okay so it is pretty obvious so you know indirectly some has an effect a social effect which will you know uh, affect uh, largely in the society okay while zakat is purely a social thing like it 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 has to do with money so all you have to do is to give money to the poor okay so this is a social work obviously okay and hajj is both it has to do with money and it has to do with your physical exercises and uh, other acts okay so if you you have to physically go to the makkah and you have to do some rituals and of course you need money for those things so uh, so these five pillars are 
if we think that these are of different nature, okay? One thing won't match with another thing. So, and of course, there are many explanations about these five pillars and what are the real benefits and what are the real wisdom behind this. Uh, even though we are not going to, you know, get those into those discussion because uh, we don't have much time. But whenever we will be talking or discussing about any of this topic inside the Quran, when any verse will come, okay, uh, when a related verse will come, we will talk about these things, inshallah, uh, at that time. Okay, so let's get ahead. Here you can see what is Iman? Who can say? Let's get to you. What is Iman? Who can say what is Iman? Uh, faith. How much faith do you have in Allah? Faith in Allah. Any any other opinion? Iman. Don't you know what does Iman mean? Teacher. Yes. Aro dujon guest asche amader. Manha. I told you. Manha and Nafisa. Nafisa, are you there? Okay, Manha is the teacher Manha, huh? Yes. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Teacher, how are you? Uh, I'm good. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. Is it you on the picture? Uh, um, no, that's yeah. a friend. Wait, that's not a friend. That's actually a celebrity. Okay. Shapna, Nafisa ki ase? Welcome, Manha, to your class. Thank you. Okay, and who is Nafisa? Nafisa, um, no, no, they're me. Okay. English medium for it. Now she need uh, take it to Choto. Okay, my mother's take it. Hmm. Uh, Nafisa, go ahead, so. Nafisa Ruby Oh, I am Okay. Wasi? Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Okay, no problem. Okay. Welcome all to the class. So, uh, we were in the discussion about what Iman. Okay, so what is Iman? Who said? Junaid, what do you think? What is Iman? Sir, I think faith in Allah. Faith in Allah. Okay, very good. Faith in Allah is Iman. Okay, anything else? Farzad, do you have any other opinion? If as I did hot. You did hot. Yes. Iman means you did hot. No, no, no. Faith. Okay, Iman means faith. Okay. Yeah. Fatima. I think it means faith in Allah. Faith in Allah. Okay, very good. Okay, so Iman, Iman literal, the literal meaning of Iman is belief, to believe, okay? Iman is, Iman means to believe. So, the person who believes is called Mu'min, okay? Iman means to believe. And what are the things that we should believe? That's the important part. Okay, Iman means to believe. This is very simple. But if you if you believe that 
you know, cow is God. If you if you believe that cow is God, are you are you will you be a mu'min? Will this will this belief make you a mu'min? What do you say? No. 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 If you if you were a Muslim, if you were a mu'min, this belief will you know kick you out of the iman. <laughs> so we have to be very careful about the things that what we should believe and what are the things that we shouldn't believe. Okay. So iman is the so if you know this iman makes you islam basically this iman makes you a muslim okay the main difference between a non-muslim and a muslim is iman or something else you know it? no sir Farzad, what is what is the difference between a muslim and a non-muslim muslim wears glasses and non-muslim doesn't this is the difference the difference is the religion difference is the religion and what does that mean difference is the religion the difference is that where the, exactly do you see the difference the difference is the in, a, in the a non-muslim eats something in, else in, and you eat something because else is this like they that they don't believe non-muslim don't muslim always believe in uh Allah, but Monarmus does not. Okay. Uh, you are lagging. I cannot hear you. I think there is a problem with my internet connection. Okay, let me check. I'm coming in a while. Muslim and a non-Muslim is belief. Okay, so if you believe, if you believe in those fundamental issues of Islam, then you will be a believer. Then you will be a mu'min. If there is something wrong in your belief, okay, you might be out of the fold of Islam, but you won't even know. Okay, so that's why iman is very important. There are more than 70 branches of Iman. Okay, we we can find in Hadith. Okay, there are a lot of Hadith about these things, about beliefs, and uh, scholars found out that there are more than 77. Okay, uh, more than 70, like 7 to 7, okay, approximately. The total branches of Iman. But there are main six important things which are called Arkanul Iman, which are called articles of faith or articles of Iman, the Arkans of Iman, okay? So we have to, basically we have to, if we just, if we just understand those things, if we just, if we have pure belief in those things, we are, you know, Muslims, uh, okay? So uh, that will be okay and that will be enough for us. So what are those what are those six articles? Let's see. Who can say? Who can say what are those six articles? 
six articles of Iman. I don't know. Okay, anyone? Believe in Allah, believe in the angel. Believe in the kitab and the kiyama. Mm, okay, Fatima, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so these first of all, believe in God, you know, believe in Allah, you know, uh, then uh, believe in angels, believe in books, believe in prophets, believe in the day of judgment, believe in other other means taqdeer okay in the faith so these are the six articles of faith if you claim to be muslim you have to you know have a clear understanding and a pure belief in these six things these are the most fundamental you know uh, iman okay baba mukmin okay am i lagging You're kind of lagging for me, but I can still hear you. It's fine. Okay, my network is poor, I think. That's why the problem. Sorry. Okay. Okay, let's uh, go ahead. Okay, have you ever heard the word Sharia? Who heard the word Sharia? Me. Me. Do you know the meaning or not? No. No, okay. So the word... Okay, so Sharia, you know, the, they say Sharia law or something, okay? So, so what is Sharia? Sharia literally means a path, a way, okay? So, you know, the, the ways and the paths that we can find from the sources of Islam, which are like Quran and Hadith, okay? Those are called Sharia. Okay, every rulings, all the rulings and all the things that we have to do, which are related in our day-to-day -day life, okay, our, you know, do's and don'ts, those are the things called Sharia, okay, so the Sharia has uh you know uh, islamic law we can you know in english we can say islamic law it is pretty much sharia okay even though islamic law uh the arabic of islamic islamic law is fiqh but there is a little bit difference between fiqh and sharia we are not going to get that point yet uh just understand that islamic law is sharia and every law has its own source okay so law is made from some sources okay like the law of bangladesh okay all the laws of bangladesh the the main sources of those law are the customs and uh you know customs of bangladeshi people and the constitution of bangladesh okay so those are the sources of of law okay so similarly similarly there are two main sources of islamic law okay two main sources of islamic law which are the holy book quran and the sunnah sunnah means the traditions or the prophetic you know practices uh, of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam his sayings his you know, whatever he he did okay and uh, all the things related to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is called you know sunnah Farzad, what are you doing? Okay. So, sources of Islamic law, 
the main sources of Islamic law is the obviously the Holy Quran. So this is where we are interested. This is what we are interested in. Okay, the Holy Quran and our, uh, you know, we will be discussing. We will be uh, learning about the Quran, inshallah, uh, in our this class. Okay, so what is Quran? We all know that Quran is uh, holy is book of Islam. Islam. Yeah, the Quran is, you know, it is a divine book brought down from heaven by angel Jibreel alayhi salam to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, and it took uh, totally 23 years, okay, to reveal this book, okay? So, Quran is not a mere, you know, uh, scripture, it is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay? And we all know that there are 30 paras or parts in the Quran and uh, 140 surahs all together, okay? And each surah, each surah has different number of verses. But the first revealed verses to the Prophet ﷺ from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq Okay, along with other four verses of Surah Alaq uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first revealed these verses on Prophet Muhammad ﷺ through Hazrat Jibreel ﷺ when he was in the cave of Hira Okay, we all know that story, I think But you know, Quran al Karim is a long book, and you can find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about a lot of things in the Quran. Okay? Like, you know, Surah Fatiha is of uh, one topic, and Surah Baqarah is of another. Okay, there are a lot of topics in Baqarah itself, and, you know, uh, one verse talks about one thing, and another verse talks about another. So there are a lot of topics. But if you just summarize the whole Quran, you will find five main topics in the Quran. How many topics, Fatima? Which Fatima? Five. Five all. There are two Fatima. Fatima one, Fatima two. Which one is one? Okay. Who can answer first? Let's see. Five. Five. So there are five main topics in the Holy Quran. Okay. If you just randomly take a verse, okay, any verse, if you just take it, it will be, you, you know, under any of these five categories. Okay. First, first category, first topic is law. Okay. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala almost talked about everything of you know from our personal life to you know social family and you know uh, other uh, everything Allah Subhanahu wa talked about everything the what should we do and why what shouldn't okay what are the pro prohibitions what are the you know uh, mandatory commandments what are the uh, uh, what are the things so Allah Subhanahu wa talked about these things like economy marriage divorce inheritance social etiquettes okay family responsibilities, even government, international politics, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, haven't left anything, okay? From worship to international politics, he said a lot of things. So those verse, you know, relate uh, we, you, to, to the topic law, okay? So those, uh, any verse which talks about any kind of law uh, uh, comes under this category. Okay, second category. Second category is disputation. What is disputation? You know, a lot of people, if I say maximum people of this world, they have not, they don't have correct opinion or correct belief regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? Like many people commit shirk, many people are atheists, they don't even, you know, acknowledge that Allah exists okay so there are a lot of people who have who don't have right belief Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know countered those beliefs in the Quran okay Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
talked about idol worshippers and what are the mistakes that they made and what are the mistakes of Jews, what what is wrong with the belief of Christianity, okay? And Allah SWT talked about these people and disputed all their, uh, you know, beliefs, false beliefs, okay? And Allah SWT made this thing very clear that what are the, what is wrong with those beliefs, okay? And Allah SWT then told them that uh, the, what is the right belief and what beliefs should they hold, okay? So these, uh, these verses will come under this topic, which is disputation. And the third category or third topic is mentioning the favors of Allah. There are a lot of verses you will find in the Quran that where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked that how, what he did for us. Okay, he created this earth, he created heaven, you know, and animals, trees, and, you know, gardens, and everything, fruits, crops, okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about the favors and blessings that he bestowed upon mankind or his creatures. Okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions his creation of the heavens and earth, and he mentions all the beautiful and useful things that he created for our benefit. So these things will come in this category. Okay, then number four is mentioning great historical events. Okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked a great deal about previous stories, like what happened to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, Pharaoh, and okay, uh, what happened to Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, and the story of Noah, okay, the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, okay, Ad, Samud, and other previous nations, okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about those historical events and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, dealt with those people okay Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about those things so that we uh we can uh, teach hello? ourselves can I, can I say something? sorry um I have to go right now because I have a different class okay okay if I so thank you it's just at 11 yeah okay no problem all right so um, okay and this is the f number four category number four you know uh topic and the five fifth and the final topic is you know mentioning death and what comes after it okay so quran deals with this topic that we have to die and there is a life after death sorry i can't hear you I can't hear you. Okay. Can't you hear me? Now I can. Okay. Hear you. Okay. I think my. Maybe you're muted. You was muted. Yeah, I'm not muted. That time. That time. Yeah. Now. That time. No, no. That was net. Uh, you know, connection problem. I wasn't muted. Okay, anyway, so the final uh, topic or the fifth topic is about death and hereafter. Okay, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala talked in this uh, in the, in the Quran that what comes after death, there will be a day of judgment and we will be gathered there. Okay, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Uh, ask the questions and we will be held responsible for whatever we are doing in this life so everything we will be asked in the hereafter about everything so this is the this is the fifth topic so any any verse that you you take from the quran you know it will come under any of these five topics so uh, we have to uh, read these five topics very carefully and we have to set these things in our mind, okay? And here, uh, you know, uh, in can't total... Hear again. Okay, Ryan, can you hear me? Hash one of that, Okay. So, among these 
140 surahs, there are 86 surahs which are called Makkan surahs. And other 28 surahs are called Madinan surahs. Okay, what are the difference? What are the differences? The main difference is, you know, when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in Makkah, you know, when, uh, you know, after the revelation, the first 13 years he has spent in Makkah and then he migrated to Medina and last 10 years of his life, he he was in Medina. So there are some surahs. Yes. Yeah. There are some surahs which were revealed in Makkah. Okay, those mm -hmm. are called Makkah surahs. And there are also some surahs which were revealed in Medina. Those are called Medina surahs. Okay, so those surahs which were revealed before the Hijra are called Makkah, and those which are revealed after Hijra, after the migration, those are called Medina surahs. So. Uh, Madinian Surah, number of Madinian Surah is 28 and Makkan Surah 86. Okay, and you get the characteristics of Makkan Surah and Madinian Surah in the last uh, two pages of this lecture sheet. Uh, I am not going to make this class any longer. Uh, so if you have any question, if you, you can ask, uh, otherwise we can end the class here. Okay, uh, I'm going to send this lecture sheet to your uh, uh, Skype group and you will, uh, you can download it uh, from there and you can study it from there. Okay, so does anyone have any question? No. No? Okay. No. 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 Either you understood everything or you understood nothing. <laughs> Those who don't have any question, okay, either you have understood everything or you understood nothing. I don't know which category you are in. Okay. Okay, we'll see when it comes no. to I will take exams from you, okay? You will get, I will get to know there. Okay, anyway, so see you in the next uh, Saturday, inshallah. Till then, uh, stay good. Allah Hafiz. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khayyin. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah Hafiz. Assalamu alaikum. Allah Hafiz. Assalamu um, I'll be on D. Yes, Manha. Thank you, Manha. Oh, yeah. Um, I tried to call you last mm -hmm. night for the thing you wanted me to read, but it didn't go through, I guess, because you didn't pick up. Oh, really? Um, sorry, Manha. Now, I called you on Thursday night and then mm -hmm. yesterday night, but I guess it didn't work. Oh, maybe I... Um, maybe I was outside. Oh, okay, okay. That's fine. okay, it's okay. Next next week, inshallah, again, huh? Okay. Okay. Thank you very and much. Also, mm -hmm. And there are also four days close up there, so it was yesterday, today, tomorrow, and day after tomorrow. Okay. Okay, okay. 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 ok